Yeah, it is. But they don't care about that. Nah, I don't, I, they don't really care about uh, if you uh, you go out or not. They just look for the next person. You know what I mean? They, you, you die, all right. Hopefully your brother was using it. Let me get him. How about your kid? All right? It don't matter. I remember one of the greatest things that, excuse me, my wife said one day when a guy rode past in this nice car, and she said, man, you brought that joke a nice car, baby. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you see how you, you heard that? That hurt. Because I said, God, because I never, I never looked at it that way. He rode past. She said, no, then she, she got deeper. She, had, she went far. She said, man, I might ask this joke to take me out. No, I said, introduce me <laughs> to him. She said, introduce me to him. Maybe he'll take me out. Yep. Since he got all your money. <laughs> Think about it. The house they got, the car they got. That's mine. It's yours. Mm. She said, man, he, you brought him yeah. a nice car. I said, I never thought about that. Mm. That's why when y'all come home, they contact you. Because y'all the car pair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who gonna pay the car note? I need you. First one on me. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got you. I gotta spot you, man. You know I got you. They just wanna get you started. Once they get that engine revved up. <laughs> over. Yeah, once they get that engine revved up. So let's move. All right, let's uh, go to the mission statement on page five and six. Let's see what we got here. This shows me. Um, page five and six is the mission statement, right? Yes. I believe so. Uh, and then we're going to do uh, always mine. That's mine. That's the, I mean now. Uh, five and six. Everybody see the mission statement, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it says to attain um, minor adjustments is dedicated to preventing and reducing crime. Our primary purpose is to teach men and women how to make the minor adjustments that are necessary in their lives, which will allow them to obtain and maintain a productive lifestyle after incarceration and or rehabilitation. Our motto is anywhere Backwards. I know y'all. I know y'all fool. Take a burp. Everybody say anywhere, anywhere, but back. But back. Say anywhere, anywhere, but back. But back. Say anywhere, anywhere, but back. But back. And I got that from Jeremiah seven twenty four. Never forget the scripture. Jeremiah chapter seven verse twenty four. It says, "Yet they did not obey and inclined their ear to me." They followed the counsel of their own hearts and they kept going backwards and not forward. Mm -hmm. So anywhere, anywhere. So God is saying, if you incline your ear to me, you can always tell because if you're going forward, yeah. but if you're going backward, you ain't listening to me. He said, if they incline their ear to me, that you can tell because their lives will be headed forward. Yeah. If you see them going backward, it's because they're listening to themselves. Because he will never tell you to call you out of something that you were struggling with and tell you to go back to something you were struggling with. He will always cause us out of something. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 23, he says that God called us out of Egypt so we might go into the promised land. He says, I called you out of bondage. I never call you out of something to go into nothing. I call you out of something to go into something. Right. So he never would tell you, yo, I'm going to call you out of drugs, but I'm going to send you back to drugs. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. He would never do that. Everybody say to attain my sobriety is easy. To attain my sobriety is easy. Our challenge is, our challenge is to, maintain to maintain it. Say to attain our sobriety is easy. To attain our sobriety is easy. Our challenge is to maintain it. The reason why I say that, and I'm going over it because we learn by repetition. Right? Listen, the reason why I say that is because to come into the possession, uh, to obtain something means to come into the possession of something. But to maintain something means you keep it in existence. So once you, once I got my sobriety in August 2009, I did not have to go get it in August 2010. All I had to do was maintain it. 
You have to do the same thing. Right now, prayerfully, you ain't high. Amen. So you got your sobriety even if it's only one day. Yeah. On. Now, from this day forward, you don't have to go get it again. You just need to do whatever you need to do to maintain it. Everybody say, to say my sobriety is easy. My challenge is to maintain. I told y'all I deal with simplicity. You, 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 you can't complicate it because it's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. That's right. You, you just got to remember whatever you need. Everybody's different, but don't nobody know themselves better than them. Mm -hmm. You know what you need to work on. Mm -hmm. You know where you're weak. Yeah. You know where you're strong. Stop yeah. working on all the areas where you're strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You Come got on. that. Come on now. Where you weak at? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to, you want to develop where the areas you weak. If I tell somebody, like sometimes we think as men, you know, the man got to know everything and got to do all this and you got to do all that as the man. If something wrong with my car, I, I call my wife. She know more about cars than me. Yeah. I'm with them. So, why not? so when something wrong with my car, I tell my wife what the car noise is. Babe, it's this noise. It's this noise. She say, oh, this transmission. You need this and you need this. Because I'm with it. Sounds familiar. But, if you, but you got to understand, the area you weak, you need somebody else. So while you're in this program, whatever area you weak at, that's what you want to work on. So let's move. Today we're going to do, or the next two lessons is always... Visualize vertically. Anybody say always. 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 Visualize. Visualize. Vertically. Vertically. Each lesson I always try to have an expectation for the lesson that I'm teaching. This one is everyone will learn what they need to learn in their development stage. I just was talking about that. Everybody will learn what they need to learn while you're in your development stage. I'll talk about it in a minute. Always live off your vision. Never live off your sight. Your sight shows you what's now, but your vision shows you what to come. Remember I told y'all that? Mm -hmm. I, I was mentioning that, right? Yeah. So unbelief in ourselves is so prevalent that I do not wish to say anything that might be interpreted as excusing it. But for all of our being so slow to believe in ourselves, I still think that we sometimes blame ourselves for unbelief when our trouble was nothing more than our inability to visualize. If you have a willing mind and are truly ready to make some minor adjustments in your life, you will have to learn how to always visualize vertically. Anybody say always. Always. always visualize. Visualize vertically. The reason why that is, is important is because you got to always look up higher. Yeah. If you're on this level or whatever level you want, always look up to a higher level. Something higher than it. Somebody know no more than you. You never want to be in a circle where you know everything. Mm -hmm. If you're the one, you're the smartest one in the circle, it doesn't make these people in the circle stupid. You just have advanced. Mm -hmm. So that means now getting another circle where mm -hmm. you're no longer, you need to look up to them. Mm -hmm. right. It's okay to keep advancing. Yes. 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 You get around people, you, you know everything, you know all the ins and outs. Man, I gotta get out of here. I, yeah. I, I outgrew y'all. Yeah. Yeah. But if I outgrow you, I can't grow. Because mm -hmm. who's gonna put something in me? So I try to get around. Like my phone, I just I noticed in my phone, right? I noticed I start looking at my contacts, right? I look at my, my, the people I got in my phone, and I noticed I got directors, pastors, and you, you know what I'm saying. I got yeah. I'm like, whoa, yo, my my roller desk tents. Yeah. I got people who, who 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 is here. I'm like, man, I got counselors in, and you know, I'm like, each number in there is somebody that has a, a particular part of my life that they can pour into me. That's right. Which makes me grow. I want to be. I want to grow. I want to learn. What did you do? You went to school for that. I want to go to. Let me find out something. How can I be better at business? How can I be better at my spiritual relationship? How can I be better in marriage? You you want to have people where you can grow. Remember, I said everyone will learn what they need to learn in the development stage. Now, and most people believe that uh, when a caterpillar goes from being a caterpillar. And it goes in the cocoon and it goes to the adult butterfly. Mm -hmm. But actually, the caterpillar is three insects. It'd be called three insects. When the caterpillar is the caterpillar, that's its name. When it goes into the cocoon, it actually changes its name. The name of the insect in the cocoon is called the pupa. Mm -hmm. 
P-U-P-A. Pupa. Everybody say pupa. pupa. The pupa is the insect that's in the stage of development. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's important is because before the pupa go to the adult butterfly, while it's in the cocoon, it has to develop everything it needs to, to function as the adult butterfly. So while it's in the cocoon, you're in your cocoon, you're in your development stage. In order for you to be successful after here, you have to learn what you need to learn while you're in your development yeah, stage. That's right. Come on. So now. when you grow up to be that adult butterfly out there, you'll already have it. Yeah. It don't grow, it doesn't get what it needs at the adult butterfly. Mm -hmm. When it's in the development stage, it's getting everything that it needs so when it comes out. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't get it when it be there. It's in a development stage. This is your development stage. So everything you need to get, you got to get here. You can't wait and say, you know, I'm going to work on stuff. As soon as I leave, when I get out, I'm, it's too late. It's, it's not going to happen that way. This is stay as long as you need to develop. If you don't get what you need to develop, it's going to be a repeated cycle. And one of the things that we got to be humble about is being honest about I'm not ready. I went to rehab the last time I was in. I got kicked out one rehab, didn't use, checked into another one. Mm. Why? I knew I ain't had what I needed. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I messed up that that one. Yeah. But I never used. I got kicked out, but I knew I ain't ready. Yeah. I said, damn, I ain't ready. I got I to gotta get in somewhere ASAP. Yeah. But I knew I didn't develop. I went to this particular rehab. They let you stay. The program was four months. I stayed four months. You can stay an extra month if you want to stay to help individuals who come in new. Yeah. They said you got the option to stay for another two months, three months? Three, months. three more months. And you, they call you a disciple. I stayed three extra months. Mm -hmm. Actually, four extra months. You got, you got sentenced to another 30 days of being bad. Yeah, that's right. So I still wasn't ready. So the first four months, yeah, that's right. I, no, so listen. Yeah, I forgot. Look, I got kicked out. Everybody say development. development. So I get kicked out of one program. Following the rules. Breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out. I didn't use. I checked into another one. Yeah. I stayed four more months. Right. I still was breaking rules. They gave me a 30-month extension. 30 day extension. That's five months. Mm -hmm. Then after my extension was up, they said, would you like to stay? I said, yeah. Because I still wasn't developed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Only thing that I knew mm -hmm. is I wasn't going backwards. backwards. Mm -hmm. my God. Uh, the, everything else, I was. if I'm getting extensions, that means I'm breaking rules. I'm, 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 I'm not ready. Mm -hmm. So you have to get what you need while you're developed. So I stayed three more months. During that particular, I was so seeds. At that particular three months, every week they pay you. They pay you as a disciple. They give you like $75 a week, right? They was giving me $75 a week. What I did, this is what I did. I took the check, the money, put it in the envelope, put it in the closet. Next week, they pay you, put it in the envelope, put it in the closet. All through the three months, ask my wife. When it was time for me to graduate, I went to them and I said, here. They said, what's this? You never opened your money? I said, nah, because this program you had to pay to come in. I said, nah, I want to get the money back. So if somebody want to come and come in this program and don't have the money, that's their payment. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. I sold the seed for somebody else that was going to come and didn't have money. Wow. One of the main reasons I did that is because money was my trigger. Yeah. I left that program with all that money. <laughs> money, remember I told y'all who was in here, money was my trigger. So I said, man, I can't leave clean with that. I'd rather be broke. Okay. But I knew that I was developing. That's why when the inset is in the cocoon, the inset is called the pupa. If you Google pupa, it says the insect that's in the stage of development. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Because when it becomes the adult butterfly, you th everybody thinks it got what it needed as the adult butterfly. Mm -hmm. No, it didn't. 
By the time he got time to fly, he better already had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> or he was going to run into a wall. He was going to go into a fan or something. Yeah. He had to learn how to do that in the cocoon. Yeah. His wings had to get developed. And all of y'all in here right now, the time y'all have is development time. Yes, it is. Get with the people who is focused on being successful. I mean, some people ain't going to always get it. But you know the people how pay attention to the conversations. Mm -hmm. What are your conversations mm -hmm. like? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you get around people who conversation <laughs> is similar to what you're trying to do, start right there. Might you get one, then the next person in that group, their conversation has to be similar to what we're talking about in this group. I don't need you to tell me how bad the program is, what the majors don't do. I don't need all that. You, they already got a job. They good. I'm trying to get myself together. Come I'm on, not man. worrying about it. Come on. What, let's talk about us. Come on, man. Don't worry about it. What, we, what can we do to make us come back and inspire other individuals who are going to come behind us? Yeah. How can we inspire? I was telling one of the young gentlemen um, the, uh, last night. I told him what I used to do. This was my strategy. He mentioned um, that this was his first time in the program, right? So I said, let me tell you what I would do. I would find somebody who had been here more than one time. And I would not judge them. I'll go to that individual and I ask them, the first time you left, could you explain to me what, what, what happened to make you come back all those other times? Because when I leave, it'll be my first time. And possibly, you tell me what happened that made you come back, I might run up against it and say, hold on. This is what that man told me. Oh, come on now. So I said, go find somebody who's been here more than once. Mm -hmm. And you ask them. You ask them information. Yo, what happened when you was here the first time? Why are you back again? Can you please tell me? I'm not trying to judge you, sir. I'm trying to learn so I don't have to repeat it. Yeah. And if that person is humble enough and honest enough, he'll tell you where his mistakes were. And you glean from him, go to the next person. How long you been? You been here, sir? Yeah, you been here. This is my first time, man. Could you tell me what happened? How did you do? Would you trust me? They know where they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Just ask them. A might see always. Always. Visualize. 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 Vertically. Vertical. The word vertical mean, visualize mean to form a mental image of something incapable of being viewed or not currently visible. So your vision, your sight shows you one thing, your vision shows you the opposite. My wife, like I told you, I told my wife I want, when I was smoking crack, I told my wife I won't always be addicted to crack. Now, my sight showed her, man, you won't crack now. Yeah. But my vision showed me doing this, helping people who are in programs. Come on now. My sight at that time was me on drugs. But I verbally said, I won't always be on drugs. That's why I'm telling you it's important what y'all let come out your mouth. Yeah. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. Yeah. So the more you keep saying this negative about yourself, come on the now. more you're going to live up to what you're saying. Come on so now. if the power is in our mouths, why not say, I'm a mighty man of God? Come on now. Why not say it? What, what it's going to do to you. Yeah. If you got the power, what will it do to you to say, I can do it? What, what will it do if you say, I have a purpose? Come on now. So if you, if you have the power in your mouth, why not say it? Help us, Jesus. Because everybody else is going to say, you're a crackhead, you're an alcoholic, you're an addict, you this. They don't have a problem calling you that. Yeah. That you. So why you. So you need to say what you are, who you are. You're a mighty man of God. That's right. Don't, don't never <laughs> underestimate yourself. Amen. Amen. So many people call you, they're going to call you stuff, but tell yourself who you are. That's right. Who do you visualize about? This ain't in your book. When our dominant desires are bad, our whole life ends up bad. When the desires are good, our life comes to the level of our desires. And the Bible talks about God giving us the desires of our heart. Yeah. So he says, what you desire, I'll give you. So when we, when we, when we have a a bad desire, he ain't give it to us. That's what I des but that's what we desire. Mm -hmm. Like my wife said, in my in my project where I grew up at, people were selling drugs, robbing, and I loved it. I used to see and say, that's what I want to be. I literally want to say, I was like, I want to be a drug dealer. 
I want to be the guy that slept on top of me every time I looked out the pee hole, he was taking another chick upstairs. I said, God, that's what I'm, what, what is it? Whatever he is, that's what I want. But in my neighborhood, it was a lot of people who didn't do that. But I didn't desire that. That's right. I desired what I focused on. So your desires add up to what you really want. So you got to have, your desires have to be some good desires. What do you desire for your life? That's where you visualize. You visualize about whatever you desire. Yeah. You desire to be free. You desire to be out of bondage. You desire whatever you desire. Yeah. It seems like it doesn't work, but you got to start thinking about it. We're not telling you something that we didn't do ourselves. That's right. I'm telling you something that I actually tried. Let me, I'm, I got to be honest with you. Well, the first time I seen it work, I was like, it's on. Yeah. I'm rolling with Jesus. Yo, the first time I seen that I could have what I thought, mm. it was easy for me to be sold on anything else. That's yeah. right. Amen. The first time I seen it come to fruition. Amen. Page 38. What does your sight show you? There's um, a word it's called comorbidity. It's C-O-M-O-R-B-I-D-I-T-Y. And it's a medical term, really. And when I read up on this term, it says it's two or more issues occurring in the same person at the same time. I said, so hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I said, hold on. So it's a word that said that it can happen. The same thing can happen. Two different things can happen at the same time. Mm -hmm. So remember I talk about your sight and your vision. Right. Mm -hmm. They can happen. Yeah, y'all got it. <laughs> so, so even though your sight shows you what's now mm -hmm. and your vision shows you what to come, mm -hmm. they can occur in the same person at the same... Yes, they can. Come on, man. Yeah, come on now. It can happen. It says two or more things happen in the same person at the same time. So even though your present situation shows you that you are in the Salvation Army, if you visualize, your vision can show you somewhere else. Yes. And they all can go on in Hallelujah. the same person at the Hallelujah. same time. Mm. Yes. Everybody say always. 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 Visualize. 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 So yes, your present situation is this. Yes, you might don't have your uh, marriage restored. Yes, you suffer divorce. Yes, your children don't like you right now. That's all your sight. Yes. But what your vision shows you. Your vision shows you happily married, relationship back with your kids, got your own home. Then come on, man. You got to have both going on at the same time. You got to do it that way. Or you'll get depressed thinking about your sight when really you can have two things going on at the same time. Man, when I read that word, I came across that. I said, man, what is this? It says two or more issues occurring in the same person yes. at the same time. Yes. I said, that's what I've been trying to say. I knew I wasn't trying. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I knew. I never knew it. The word, I never knew it. I just knew that I had one thing going on, but I was saying the other thing. And I'm like, man, I don't know how that's possible, but it was both in my head. I said, I'm on crack. And I said, I won't always be on crack. Wait a minute. I'm on crack. I won't always be on crack. I'm on crack. I won't always be on crack. I'm on crack. I won't always be on crack. Two different things. If I can do it, you can do it. Yes, you can. You're not exempt. No, you are without excuse because God showed you somebody that he did it for. And once he put you in front of somebody that he did it for, it eliminates your ability to have an excuse. Yeah, yes, it does. You was almost probably better not meeting me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> or anybody. I'm just joking. But I'm saying, you, you, you now have no excuse. no excuse. That's right. You just got to focus on going anywhere. But backwards. Let's see. What's your, what does your vision show you? The first one I was talking about, what your sight showed you, your sight showed you your current situation. What does your vision show you? Miles Monroe had a quote. I love Miles Monroe. He said, your vision is a preview of your purpose. Mm -hmm. 
He said, your vision, what, he said, we know your sight is real. Your vision is also real because they can both occur at the same time. And he says, whatever you got in your vision, that's a preview of your purpose. So if you got something, if you don't have anything there, you need to start putting something there. Whatever you put in that vision, that's a preview of the purpose or the path that you're going to go. So whatever I had there, I won't always be on crack, was my preview of my purpose of being a counselor. It was a preview of, yeah, you're not going to be on it. Not only are you not going to be on it, you're going to be able to not be judgmental to people who are currently struggling with alcohol, drugs, and yeah. everything. It was a yeah. preview. I didn't know it was a preview of my purpose of helping individuals who were just like me. Mm. Do you believe in yourself? Mm. Yes. Do you believe in yourself? That's good. Because one day the story uh, by Dr. Um, Tony Evans. And this book, Kingdom Man, good book, I recommend yeah. it. It's called Kingdom Man. It's a great book. You should get it. Uh, he wrote, he said a story about, <laughs> nice that, he got Tony Evans Bible. Yo, Kingdom Man is a book. But anyway, he's told the story about a man. Uh, the question is, do you believe in yourself? He, he's told a story about a kid. He said he came home every time he would come home. His son would be outside, and he would be trying to dunk this basketball. Mm -hmm. Be out there trying to dunk the ball. The man, the father would come home, walk past, see his son. Say, how you doing, son? He go in, sit down, get comfortable, look out the window. His son's still out there trying to dump. So he come home one day, he come in, see his son out there trying to dump. He ain't get it. He go in the house, and his son come running in. Dad, come outside. He said, for what? He said, I got it. He said, you got what? He said, I'm dunking now. I'm dunking. So he go outside. His son out there, sure enough, he back up. He go over there, boom, two hand dunk. Mm -hmm. So his father go over to the court and raise it up to the regular 10 foot standard <laughs> and told his son, listen, never lower the standard yes, and sure. call it success. Mm -hmm. Live up to the standard and then call it success. Yeah. Yeah. Because he didn't believe in himself, so he figured, I got to lower the standard. And what we do when we're struggling with drugs, this is how we lower the standard. If my drug of choice is heroin, I'll try to negotiate and say, well, I'll just do coke, not heroin. Because I want to lower the standard. If it's alcohol, I say, well, I just smoke weed and don't drink. We keep trying to lower the standard instead of living up to the standard that we can't do nothing. Come on now. Mm -hmm. The standard that we put ourselves in, we can't casually have one drink. We can't casually do one bag. We can't casually do a dime bag of crap. If we honest, we haven't had one since 1941. We never did one. The last time we did one, one, we, that don't even exist at this time. So we can't do nothing. But the standard we try to set, we lower. The kid lowered the standard. He says, son, listen to me. Just let the standard stay where it is, and you try to live up to it. Amen. Don't lower the standard. When we leave out of here, we keep lowering the standard. Well, I probably can do it just on the weekends. Mm -hmm. yeah. We keep trying to lower. We're trying to lower. And honestly, God's standards is set. He's never. Going up. <laughs> See, I'll meet you in the middle. <laughs> it's not it's not going to work. So you got to remember, live up to the standard. The standard is not something that's man-made. You know the standard for you. You know, I can't, me, I, I never really had, uh, my thing that I used to enjoy was cracking heroin. I never had, like, like marijuana or drinking. If you see me drinking it, I, I would do it, but I wouldn't be like, wake up to go get it. I would wake up to go get a crack of heroin, yeah. right? And everybody else had, they think it's a thing. But what we try to do is do something. Find something to do instead of saying, I can't do nothing. Who's snoring? Uh, I heard you way up here. <laughs> nah, let him put his feet up. You need a witcher call. I told you my mentor did that I was sleeping in group. And um, he came and bought me a thing to put my feet on. I said, what? I said, man, I'm sorry. He said, nah, man. Nah, man, you're going to do it. Put your feet up. Because I'm good. He said, Mike, I'm all right. But if you want to sleep through it, put your feet up, man. Yeah, come on, man. That's right. <laughs> I, I, he, my counselor told me that. He said, Mike, don't. 
just let me get you a chair. Man. Yeah. I said, chair? Nah, I fell asleep. He said, nah, but if you're going to sleep through it, go ahead. He said, I'm clean. I'm good. Yeah. Okay. That's right. <laughs> why you ain't telling me fire was going on? <laughs> yeah, why you? Fire in the building. Hey, you would be surprised at how many people don't move forward in life. I'm on page 39, y'all. You would be surprised at how many people don't move forward in life because of how they see themselves. You have to see yourself for being in bondage. See yourself more than a conqueror. Yeah. See yourself as the parent that you always wanted. See yourself from coming back here. Or yeah. see yourself doing something positive in your community. See yourself being responsible. See yourself being the children your parents raised you to be. And see yourself as a better person. Close your eyes and see yourself doing it. You have to see yourself doing it. Yeah. What, I'm, what I'm doing in my life now, I saw myself doing it. When you see yourself, see yourself being a better person, see yourself helping your community, see yourself being the parent that you, you truly want to be, see yourself being the husband you want to be, see yourself, do, when you, the more you see yourself doing it, like sometimes we can't even see ourselves not using. That's the, one of the hardest things that I had to convince myself that I, the word never do again. I had to see myself never doing it again. So never do crack, never do drugs, never do it again. I had to actually see myself living the life, and I'm never, ever doing it. Like, I, I just have a life. Yeah, I got life issues and life struggles. That's life for everybody. Yeah. But far as the substance, I see myself never, ever doing it again. You got to see yourself like that. You can remember you have two things that can go on in a person at the same time. You can have a sight, which is now, and you can have a vision. Yeah. You can have a vision. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I would like to get Jesus in my life, and then on top of that, I would like to um, exhort all the stuff that you got going on right here. Amen. That's always a good uh, starting point. <laughs> that, that, that's how I got here. <laughs> it was putting Jesus in first. Yeah. That's, the, that's where we got. What time is it? Uh, we got time. So we're going to let you smoke in 10 minutes and then come back at 2, all right? And then we'll finish the other one. So let's move to uh, endurance. I want to at least get in the first part of that and then I'll do the other part when y'all come back. Well, you got how many minutes you got? Ten? Yeah. Well, start endurance when you come back. This, this. Any questions? No. Well, let's start with um, having everybody repeat the, the prayer of salvation. Because someone just said they want to receive Jesus in their life. So we're not going to overlook that. You're going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. I believe, that? Come on. Everybody say Jesus. 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 I believe. I believe. I believe you're the Son of God. You're the Son of God. I Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe. You died for me. You died, you died for me. You rose for me. You will come back again for me. You will come back again for me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Your word said. Your word said. I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. I believe with my heart. I believe with my heart. The Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. I, I am, am saved. 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 Walk with yourself into the kingdom of God. Now, now you probably think it's a difficult thing to do, and it's not. Now you want to build up on your faith. And when you build up on your faith, you get with people who are Bible-believing people, and you listen to those words, and you feed your spiritual man, and you build your faith as you go. Remember, it's a personal relationship. No matter how much Jesus I get, I can't give you what I got. You have to build the relationship. And he actually, truly, honest, loves it for you to just come to him no matter how you are. Right. Talk to him like me and you talking. That's Don't right. try to be like, I need this certain word or I got to float over that down the hallway to him. You ain't got to do all that. You can meet him at the soda machine or at the phone booth. Doesn't matter. Yeah, right? right? So you just talk to him like that and you build it up. And, then, and even if you don't believe in um, something um, on that level, try it. You ain't, I mean, what you got to lose? <laughs> no. you, you don't lose nothing. <laughs> it, ain't like, it ain't like you got to pay for something then you lose. You can only benefit from it That's and right. just go from there. You got questions? Anybody got, yeah, let's do questions. Anybody got any questions about, uh, for me, my wife, the program, anything you need, anything, and then we um, can answer y'all if y'all got any questions. No? Um, 
Uh, before, oh yeah, let me give you these and then we can go. Remember, I gave y'all um, the enemies of your sobriety. Yes. So somewhere, look on page forty-four. You can write on there. I think you got a little space down the bottom. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you seven things. Uh, beware of the enemies of your vision. So, any space on forty-four? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, I know my book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should be. I put that in there so you can write. Say no. Huh? Uh, so look, these are. Uh, if you wasn't here earlier, I gave you, what I gave y'all? Eight. 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 Uh, eight. Eight. Uh, eight. Enemies of your surprise. So I'll give them to y'all. If y'all didn't get them from earlier, I'll give you those. But today, right now, we're going to do beware of the enemies of your vision. And one of the, um, I'm going to give you all of them. The first one is disobedience and sin. And sin. That's enemies of your vision. When you know not to do something, disobedience will lead to some type of sin, right? That's an enemy of your vision. It ain't even about you. It ain't about you. It's about the vision you have. The vision you have, the disobedience and sin is the enemy to your vision. I got to get you away from what you think you can possibly get. So that disobedience and sin. The next one is fear or discouragement. Fear and discouragement. Fear comes in because some of our visions be so big, the fear will come and say, you can't never have that. You ain't going to never have no good marriage, man. Who you think you is? So fear sets in, and then we get discouraged. Anytime that you got a vision and the fear tries to come in, you should actually get excited. Because why is something trying to make you be fearful of achieving it? That means you can achieve it. Okay. Fear or discouragement. The next one is procrastination or past Ooh. failures. One of the things we keep doing is procrastinating. We keep putting things off. I, I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it this day. I'm going to do it that way. Or past failures is an enemy to your vision. When your past failures keep coming up, uh, to come up, and you, when your past failures come up, it's always trying to rob you from your vision. Go ahead. The, uh, Pro Procrastination, P R O C R A S T I N A T I O N. I got the short end. No, that's good. You know, whatever you can remember. <laughs> yeah, you can chew. I can. Yeah, I can I can Not always putting things off, procrastinating. You know, you know, you should. You should Pull your counsel to the side and say you're having these thoughts about that. You know you should be doing this, but you're not doing it. You're waiting. I'm going to do it next week, man. I'm going to talk to my counselor. I'm going to be honest this week. <laughs> next week, I'm, I'll, get, I'll get gut level. Yeah. Man, talk about it, man. Top procrastinating. The next one is success and tradition. Success can be an enemy to your vision because, if, for instance, I can only use my life when I wrote my first book, I could have just sat on the success of my first book and never wrote anymore. Because sometimes success, you succeed at something, you stop achieving something. You don't go after other stuff because you're success. You're like, I'm successful in this area, that's it. Nah, that's an enemy to your vision. You can keep going. What about success Tradition. Tradition is when people tell you you're trying to do something, they say, well, we don't do it that way. We always did it this way. That's the enemy of your vision. Because your vision might be different from how they traditionally did it. But if you're, if you're like, nah, we always did it this way. Yeah, that's true, but I'm trying to do something new. I'm going first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm going first. That's right. I'm like my man, he cut that, uh, that, that that's why he, his pumpkin was, wasn't scripted. Who, who did they pumpkin like that without using the paper? See, you know what I mean? His pumpkin, his pumpkin was, it was original. <laughs> he said, I ain't use paper. <laughs> he said, yeah, y'all did y'all's traditional way. I did mine. <laughs> that was the first one I was doing. That was the first one. <laughs> the next one is a wrong environment or comparison. A wrong environment. If you're always, if you have a vision, and you put yourself in a wrong environment where they're talking about a bunch of nonsense. That's an enemy to your vision because it'll get you distracted from the main focus, which is the vision that you're going for. And comparisons. 
when you keep comparing your life to his life, this to that. That happened, so it should happen to me. Not all the time. You can't compare one another. The Bible says don't compare yourself one to another. It says don't compare one to another. Not in that sense, but trying to say, well, since it happened to him, I'm not going to try at all. It might happen to me. That's not true. That's the enemy of your vision. Another, the last one is opposition and society pressure. Opposition. When you face opposition, most people back and retreat. Something come up, you got a vision, something comes up, you face some type of opposition and you say, I give up. No, if you face opposition, I'm going to tell you the truth. The only time you notice if you get opposition is when you're doing right. When you're doing wrong, nobody try to stop you from going to the crack out. That's right. The only time they try to stop you <laughs> is when you're trying to stay away. They want you to come back to it. So opposition and society pressures. So society pressures try to make you be what society say you should be. Mm -hmm. You are this. You are that. No, I'm not. That's what I did. That ain't who I am. Thank you. Come on. So man. society pressures are make you think you are who you think you are when you really are not the person that did the things. That's not you. So society will try to pressure you into believing, Michael, you're going to always smoke crack. Michael, you're going to always be a criminal. No, I'm not. You got to understand that yourself, though. Don't give in to society pressure. Society pressure is an enemy to your vision. And I'll see you guys at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock, right? Yeah. You got a vision to see me at 2.